Hey, AMP the bass player back once again. I feel like reggae is a deceptively tricky style to play. It's not about like flashy lines and fast notes, but it's all about groove and singable bass lines and unexpected rhythms. Probably the closest I've ever really gotten to reggae was my obsession with Tony Canal, who's the bassist from No Doubt. And that's a little bit more like ska than reggae, but that's basically what I have to draw on for inspiration. Uh, for gear, I chose my no-name Parts Precision. It's got flatwound strings on it. I think that's kind of the, the, the big deal on this. Kind of gives it like this wooden quality uh, that I quite like. And then I turn the tone knob all the way down, and that gives me that dubby sound that's, that's so iconic in reggae. I'm going from the bass directly into my Scarlet Solo interface, and then I'm going into Amplitube. And in Amplitube, I'm actually using my Mike Durnt preset, which if you see my video uh, on that, is probably kind of surprising because this sounds nothing like Mike Durnt. It's basically a software version of a Fender Bassman. I've dialed in a little bit of drive and bumped the mids up quite a bit. But with this bass going through it, it sounds really nice and warm, but it doesn't have all of the edge that you get when you are going for the Green Day sound. I think the hardest part about writing this bass line was coming up with something that was singably good, but without being cliche. Uh, reggae can be kind of a, a narrow genre. Sometimes it's defined by these really, really specific things. And if you do too much of that, it can come off as being insincere. And reggae is not that. It's, it's all about like feel and groove and authenticity. So I tried to play it just like how I would normally play things and then just try and like be inspired by reggae. Um, for example, there's this uh, big gap during the verse where I just don't play anything at all. And that's not normally what I would do, but that's something that you would find in reggae. And I feel like it helps the song breathe a little bit, gives you a nice little break and then also like makes the the bass like feel really good when it comes back in. Also, I opted to not have a click track going while I recorded. Uh, I didn't want it to sound robotic or like too on the grid. And so going without the click kind of gave me the feel that I was after and just kind of laid back and not worrying about Oh, that's so stupid. I'm, I'm not going to include that. Other part that I didn't hear that's worth noting is the chorus line. The inspiration for that is actually the uh, the keyboard part from the intro where it's playing that minor arpeggio. And I basically just took that and made a bass line out of it. So it's kind of like a theme within the song, uh, but it also is singable without being too busy. And that's kind of what I was going for. Otherwise, I'm mostly just letting myself improvise whatever feels good in the moment and just hold the groove down and I hope you enjoy what I came up with.
Hey guys, this is Johnny David for the Bass Channel. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about what I used for this video. Um, I was using my signature jazz bass by D. Taylor Custom Shop, the JB4 uh, Active Bass. And uh, I was also using my uh, Sennheiser interface and then I have an MXR um, bass preamp that I used. So, yeah, really simple. I have it velcroed onto here. <laughs> so when I get mad and frustrated and I accidentally bump the table, it won't, you know, fly off. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyway, so the tone I was going for for this particular track was uh, neck pickup. And uh, I turned uh, the bass up a lot more just to get that sort of boomy, thuddy kind of reggae tone that uh, I think sounds good for that kind of music and for this track in particular. So yeah, I mean, it's as simple as that. I had a blast. Thanks a lot, Chris, and thanks a lot to all of you guys for checking it out. See you later.
Bass Channel viewers. Hello, how are you today? I am so happy to be back on the Bass Channel doing this series of five bass players, one song. I hope there's five bass players today because otherwise the name's wrong. Anyway, today is a reggae song and I'm so excited. It's the day that never comes. Last time um, I was on this, we did one of my songs and it was I was so happy that we did that. I absolutely loved it and that was so cool and it was so cool to see what other people had done. So I'm just really excited about the songwriter on this song to be able to see all the different things that bass players do on this song. Or we might all do the same thing. Who knows? <laughs> so anyway, um, first of all, don't ask about this. It's KT tape. It's just, it's an elbow thing, whatever. Also, check this out. I know. I, I'm not I'm not like cross promoting, but kind of, but I have new merch. Anyway, I'm it's just I'm just kind of showing it off. So here it is. Okay, just get over it. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. Here's the questions that I know that Chris always asks. What gear are we using, first of all? So I'm going to be using my beloved TW35, my Spectre TW35. This is a BEAD tuned bass. So it's a 35-inch scale. It's like a five-string without the high string. And I didn't do anything special for the tone. I mean, I, I kind of did. I'll show you what I did for the tone. Here, we, there's always something special for the tone. I used, as you guys know, my my favorite for my Spectres is the um, Amplitude IK Multimedia. I named, I created my own setting for this, but it's basically my main setting that I usually use on my SVT4. And so these are just, you know, your basic settings that I use. You guys might have your own. But the only thing I did different was I took off the distortion, the, the extra overdrive, because this bass that I'm using is very powerful i mean it will blow up a room it it will blow up a room it is so loud and powerful that i don't really want to add any distortion right now i'm just trying to get some low notes so with this reggae song i love this song first of all because i used to live in hawaii I, some of you might know but when I lived out there, I was always playing reggae. So I love reggae music so much. And I used to listen in awe to the old reggae players, um, the bass players, <laughs> because they would basically do, they would basically do, um, they would play very minimal, right? And then when they would play, it's not with the guitar at all. They never play with the guitars playing. I mean, usually don't play with the guitars playing. The guitar's always doing this upbeat thing, this ching, ching right on the upbeat and then the bass player isn't always just doing kick drum stuff it's you they're usually doing some sort of melody that's not really the vocal melody so I was just so intrigued because they would basically make up their own melodies that go with the with the song and because there's not a lot of instrumentation there's not a lot of distorted guitars in reggae you can really hear the bass you can really pick out what it's doing and I noticed they would always use really low notes at least it felt like low notes when I started to learn the songs, it wasn't always super low notes. They just, they seem low. They sound low. They feel low because it's deep, because it's reggae. <laughs> but anyway, so they would always do this really cool melody that was just, you would remember it. Like when you when you hear the song, when you think of a reggae song, you remember the chorus and you remember the bass line. Like those are the things you remember, you know? And, and so I just, I love reggae. It's got such a special place in my heart. And then this song is so unique because... The vocalist has such a punk style. You know, I, I didn't research this this artist at all, but I'm I feel it. I feel that punk style because he's not really doing like a super duper melody. There's some parts where he just just sing kind of monotone. And the topic, the subject matter of this song, it kind of sounds like about like an abusive relationship. Someone's beating somebody. This is what's going down on this song. So that's kind of what I picked up. So it's 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 an interesting juxtaposition because there's you know the reggae jam vibe you know it's though it always gives me like an island vibe and then there's like the, this guy singing about uh, some friend of his I guess that has an abusive relationship something like that that's what I gathered from the lyrics so it has just a very they're they're like uh, opposing types of themes together this didn't change anything about my bass line. This is just really what I picked up from the song. Because, you know, I always like to really listen to the lyrics and figure out what's what's going on with the song. Anyway, so um, 
let's see. Um, did I pick up any parts? I'm, I'm going over Chris's questions that I remember. Did I pick up anything from other players on this series? No, not particularly. But I did pick up things from other reggae players, which is sometimes you just don't play like on the one. So, so it's, it's, it's like the opposite of what we learn as bass players. It's like always play on the one, never miss the one, you know, depending on the style. But oftentimes we're always trying to, you know, we're trying to keep the band directed, right? So we're always usually playing on the one. But for reggae, you don't always play on the run, one. Sometimes you just, you miss the one on purpose. And then also, um, I know it's open to adding melody, right? But I, I it's not a show off show. It's, it's not time to show off your chops, right? Because it's reggae and we're getting in a groove, right? And so that's kind of what, what I was doing with this song. And really... You know, I don't I don't think about, oh, what's the rules of reggae and let me follow them. I just listened to the song and started playing with it. That's how I wrote the line. <laughs> but I did know in the back of my mind, I can miss the one sometimes and that will help give it a reggae vibe. I can throw in some melody in some parts and that's not going to be a problem. So that's just kind of what I did. You know, I, I definitely don't follow the guitar ever on reggae. So that's just another kind of side note that I know from my reggae days in Hawaii on the island, island style. Oh, my God. I, I love reggae. I'm so excited to play this song. So I'm going to go ahead and play this song. I'm really excited, again, to be part of this. I, I want to keep being part of this series, so don't ever cut me out. <laughs> and if you guys want to check out my live stream, I live stream every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm moving it over to Twitch, so I'm exclusively going to be on Twitch live streaming Saturday night, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And don't forget, get the best bass tone you can and start writing songs, you guys. Start writing songs. We need your songs. We need the bass player input on songs. So I will see you guys all on the, the next five bass players, one song, because you better not cut me out. <laughs> and hopefully I'll see you on my live stream. See you later. Bye.
So for this track, I use my number one. It's a 2011 Fender Special P bass. Um, I got Lindy Fraylin pickups in there and a high mass bridge. And I plug that straight into a Mackie passive direct box, and that's going into my Tascam US 1800 here. And then after that, I just did a little bit of light processing, which we'll go through in a minute. Um, the vibe I was going for for this bass track was more of like that subby reggae thing, obviously because that's the reggae track. But I want it to be big and full, but not too dependent on the sub, you know, so it's still kind of there if you're listening on the phone or on the speakers or whatever. So let's run through this a little bit. I'm going to solo out my bass track here. And let's take a listen. So here it is, no processing. I'll turn everything off here. Let me open these up so you can see what's going on. Actually, I'll wait one at a time. So here it is, no processing. Right, so I'm using uh, Labella flat wounds on there. Everything's just wide open, tone wide open, volume wide open, straight in. So first thing I did was compress right here. I just used all stock Ableton stuff this time around. I'm using Ableton Live 10 right now. Um, so I did the Ableton compressor here. I did a four to one ratio, which is relatively um, aggressive for bass, but I wanted it to be kind of squashed for that whole subby reggae thing. So I wanted to keep it real tight. I got a, a little over one millisecond attack time here and then a relatively slow release. Um, let's see what that sounds like. So again, here it is without compressor. And let's do that one more time with compressor. Right, so we got a little bit of uh, extra output there, which is that perceived better soundingness, to, but it also brings out some of those a uh, little bit of a tacky, woody sounds, we like to call them, and um, it kind of just keeps those at bay also, and it keeps that sub real tight and where it needs to be in the low end throughout the whole track, so that's great. So after the compressor, I had an overdrive here, which I pretty much just used to find some upper harmonic frequencies, and by upper I just mean upper bass, like low mid frequencies, just so the bass can kind of make its way through the track and into the ears. And like I said earlier, if you're using maybe just small computer speakers or your phone, maybe, you could still kind of hear the bass track on there. It's not like it's just completely gone. So let's take a listen to this and I'll show you kind of what I did. I'll move this around a bit. So here it is without. And we'll engage. So as you can hear, it just kind of brought out some more, a little bit more of the attack, a little bit more of that low mid uh, upper upper bass frequency type of stuff. So I'll move it around a little bit so you can kind of get the, an idea of what's going on while it plays. You can see what I was going for. Very, very subtle, very subtle stuff, especially considering I have the dry wet at 5%. So if you didn't get too, too much of a difference there, I don't blame you, it's, it's just, it's a very subtle thing. So, after the overdrive, just to tame a little bit of that high end that it did bring out, I did an EQ8 here. And this was just a little bit of accentuation, rolled off some of the lows at about 20 hertz. And then I cut out 140-ish, just a bit of a dip, just to get some of that honky mid-range out of there. And then I just did a little bit of a curve down uh, for the, the highs, just to kind of tame those attacks. So let's take a listen to that. Here's without. With. So you can hear everything I've done is very, very subtle. The compressor is probably the most obvious thing in this chain, obvious to the ear. And um, really, I kind of like it that way. I mean, when you have an instrument that sounds good, you don't need to process it too hard as long as it does what it's supposed to do in the mix, you know? So if I turn all this stuff off, it really isn't too different. Just watch, you can see here it is with everything. And here's without. You can hear it just kind of it kind of fills out the track a little bit and just fills out that space. So when you hear it in the mix, it's got a nice little bit of a uh, fullness underneath there. So check it out. Right, it's real nice, real big, not overpowering, but it sits exactly where it needs to, which is exactly what I was going for. So compositionally speaking on this piece, I didn't go too crazy. I kept it relatively simple and kept it relatively true to 
reggae bass playing or at least what I'm familiar of when it comes to that so um, for the first section which we'll call I guess the riff I kept it real simple you know I had my little 16th note fill opening thing and then leave some space and then fill up a little bit more so I have my kind of pattern of sections in which I play um, and that is a recurring theme throughout um, not only this section but every section I kind of leave space in between my parts so moving on to the verse section that's where I kind of just changed the uh, note choice there the rhythm is just about exactly the same the note choice is a little different just to accentuate what's happening and just rhythmically slightly different just so there's some change of pace you know in the song so moving on to the chorus is where I really kind of kept it very cookie cutter and all the spacing between playing and all the riffs are all the same length and stuff like that just to reinforce that chorus -y bigness and um, a really interesting thing throughout this whole song and throughout reggae in general that I've noticed or at least the vibe of reggae I was going for is that the bass player is like its own force driving the song and it's not that it doesn't sync up with the drums like it totally does the drums are just doing their thing you know back there and the bass is like such a moving and driving force throughout so that's kind of what I was going for just every time I was there you know I was there playing big notes doing what I got to do so that was the vibe for the chorus and then moving on to the bridge outro section I really just followed what was going on because the chord changes don't happen too much and there was a point uh, when it switches straight into that bridge it hangs on an E for quite a while and I uh, pay homage to now I can't tell you exactly what song it's from but there's this bass line that I hear it and I just know like that is the reggae bass line so going straight in in that E thing I play that bass line as kind of an homage to like this is what I know you know here, here you go and other than that it's really straightforward just jump in between the root and the fifth and stuff like that and um otherwise that's pretty much all of the composition that went into it pretty simple but uh, serves the song well in my opinion as for what I may have learned from other episodes um there's something that a lot of people talked about in the last episode I took part in which was space and using space as a, a change up the monotony of a baseline you know kind of give movement throughout the track so what I did this time around instead of maybe dropping out for verse two or whatever that's kind of seemed to be a um a common theme that people would do is kind of drop out in sections i just wrote my bass line with that thought in mind so if you listen to how i play the parts there's a big chunk of playing little section of nothing big chunk of playing little section of nothing just to kind of give that pull and that push and kind of that tension throughout and i think i did a pretty good job of that now somebody may say i'm wrong because again i'm not a reggae bassist and i'm sure there's purists out there who are like that's the best you could do but whatever that's not why we're here right we're here to see what everybody can do differently and that's the fun part about it so i'm really looking forward to hearing everybody else's parts and um yeah that's all i got today
So here's what we're doing. I have a reggae song to record for my friend Chris at The Bass Channel. All right, it's reggae, which is not my forte. Uh, I mean, I've played it for sure. Uh, I've never been in a reggae band, but like any wedding corporate casual event i mean like yeah sure sheet music has come my way before and it's been bob marley and the whalers or uh i don't know ska slow down ska so like i i understand the genre but i'm not uh an, an aficionado i don't know like i said w when i do these i always try to come from the standpoint of like okay imagine this was a producer hiring me to play on it what would i do uh but i can almost guarantee a producer would not hire me to play on this track because this isn't what i do so I'm tr maybe imagining a scenario that really doesn't exist, so maybe what I should do is just run with it and do whatever the hell I feel like. When it comes to reggae music, in terms of your tone, uh, we're going to suck out all the juice. <laughs> the only thing we need in reggae music is the boom, 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 boom. We don't need any articulation. We're not going to use that bridge pickup at all. Like It's just all about low, subby, boomy notes. Um, and not to say that the P-Bass does that best, but it... I don't want to say it doesn't matter what instrument I use, <laughs> uh, but I know that um, I, I know that really any bass I plug in, and if I turn the treble all the way off and crank the low end, we're gonna we're gonna pretty much be uh, in in pretty good position. Look at my basses to try to decide which one would be interesting to do on this track, which would be out of the norm, because obviously a five string to get that deep, or actually there's not even that, that many low notes. It's just E to D. Yeah, I think it would actually probably be better in the higher register. You know what? Let's see. Since this bass has the range, let's go for it. It's kind of what I like about this bass. It doesn't have a lot of character. It's not a character piece. It's a. It's just a, a boom box. A boom box with a preamp. So if you want articulation, you got it. And if you want boom, it's already there. And it's got the range. So maybe we'll check this out. The Squire Bronco, that would... <sighs> You're right, that would be pretty badass too. Let me start here and see where this leads me. And then we'll uh, we'll, we'll play around a little bit. Instead of going with a DI, uh, I'm going to try uh, an amplifier. Uh, I really like this plugin. Um, hold on, give me a second to, uh, to just plug in. Yeah, already I've got a fatness that I didn't have before. Yeah, that's cool. All right, then what happens when we squash it? Yeah, yeah, I'm digging that. I'm going to play around with this a little bit. Uh, yeah, we're pretty much doing the same EQ. This is mimicking what I was doing on the DI. Bumping the lows, cutting the mids, boosting the highs. Or wait, I guess this is all part of the... Oh, wow. It has like a parametric, semi-parametric mid-range. Interesting. So it's got low, mid, 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 and then high. Uh, so it's basically a five-band EQ. That's pretty sick. And this is the reason why I wanted to go with the amp sim instead of uh, what I was doing before, which was what? Oh, going with the DI. And, and here's what I like about amplifiers versus the DI signal on your bass. When you start moving up the neck... Like down low, we've got plenty of body, plenty of sustain. But as soon as I get into this territory, the notes lose their meat. You know what I mean? The mmm goes away. But you'll notice, not the case. All of those notes have an mmm to them that, uh, that wasn't there before. I'm just gonna jam to this. I haven't played it yet. So I'm just gonna play around and kind of see what my first reaction is. Uh, I latched onto an idea there in the chorus that I that I enjoyed and it was I think that's the groove I'm going to go with. I like it. I think that's the motif, and I just need to see how I'm going to adjust it to make it a verse. Uh, again, I'm not a reggae uh, enthusiast, so I'm really not sure. Should I keep the same bass line going in this section, or should I introduce a new one that's similar but different so that it's clear we're at a new section? Because that's what I would do in pop music. 
But reggae again, that's not my thing. So uh, let's try something different. That was really cool. I'm not tooting my own horn here, but I really like how that turned out because notice the verse has a lot of space. It's almost the same. Uh, 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 uh. Wait for it. Thank you. Hi, tough. I appreciate you. So lots of space. Uh, 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 uh. Because the verse has lots of vocals in it. Listen. Two, three, four. Actually, he's singing when I stopped playing. That's why it sounded so good. So it's not me. It's the fact that when I stopped playing, he started singing the song. And then I stopped and he started again. Basically, we're just playing catch. I throw the ball and then he catches it and throws it back. That's pretty cool. So I'm actually going to do the opposite with this song that, uh, that I would normally do on any track, which is the verses are going to be simple and the choruses are going to be busy. Because again, we've got that passing the buck or throwing the ball back and forth, call and response happening in the verses. And over the chorus, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna dance. I'm going to take the bass for a walk. Okay, help me out Metallica fans, I need you now. I need you now more than ever. Metallica fans, to the rescue. Help out someone who knows literally jack shit about Metallica. What's the most famous? Chris, I need you to be listening. Steve, I need you to be listening. Everyone, Lawrence, what's the most famous, iconic Metallica bass line, bass riff, lick? Something that I can throw in right here. Right here. Anything that's right here. It doesn't have to be that long. I can elaborate it. I can uh, I can extend it out. I can do whatever. And by the way, that right there, that's exactly what it's like to be in a real recording session. If you've never been in a studio with a producer, they'll be like, hey, there's a thing. It's going to be right here. It's going to go. Like, we're talking not... Actually sounds like that. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I'm saying. It, the thing needs to happen here and maybe it goes like that. Maybe it doesn't, but that's the idea. There's notes. Notes happen here. So tell me. Ah, uh, okay. Enter Sandman. I think that's, uh, you're right, Steve. Yes, you're right. Or Lawrence, I'm sorry. You're correct. But I think it's a little too on the nose. Give me something else. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to research it right now. The intro for who the bell tolls. For whom the bell tolls. Is that the boom? Is it that one? Yes. Okay, so that's from an E, right? And it starts on the seventh. Let me know if this is correct. I can pull it up on YouTube, but then it'll get muted and I'll get in trouble. So tell me, I'm gonna guess and tell me if this is correct. It's something like. So chromatic walking down. Da 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 da. That's what I think it is. Is that the part? Chat, get at me. Is that Steve? Is that one hundred percent correct though? Because I want to do it right. And you, the Metallica fans, you guys would know. Is that is that the part? Everyone's saying yes. Okay, so now can I work that in here somehow? Let's analyze it first. It's a uh, so I'm going to land on a B, a B minor. And it's going to land on the 9. Actually, if I just start from E. Now, one, two, three, uh. All right, we're going to record this bad boy. You guys ready? Let's get my coffee mug out of the way. Anything else not look right? Chris, I hope it's not a problem that there's a Christmas tree behind me. This video probably won't come out at Christmas time. It looks good. That's all that matters. All right, sweet, dude. Okie dokie. Let's do it.
Bye.